What's up everybody, I am the German sport guy. I've been playing volleyball since the age of six and I've been to multiple German championships. Currently I'm playing in the third German division and today in this video I'm going to teach you how you can do a good float surf. First thing first, I'm left-handed but this is no problem at all. I'm going to show you everything with my left hand and you have to adapt it. This isn't a problem because it is always important to develop your unique style, your unique technique because not, my technique is not perfect for you so you really have to think about what is good for you, what works good for you. You can of course copy my style or my technique, my exact movement but this might not be the perfect technique for you. So always keep this in mind and let's get started. To learn this technique there's one really important thing. At the contact, at the point of contact with the ball, your upper body has to be stable. And right after touching it, it also keeps being stable. We don't want any lateral rota any rotation, any lateral movement, any sideways movement, I don't care. We just want your upper body to be stable, so always keep tension in your upper body at the moment when you touch the ball. So, let's start with the first important thing. How do you throw the ball? It really depends on your preferences, either with two hands or with one hand. I think to start with the float surf, one hand is always easier because you can already keep your other hand back. When talking about keeping your hand back, we can start with the movement. I'm going to do this first without a ball, so we don't need this for now. The important thing here is that you rotate your whole body back. So your shoulder has to be really far open, your upper body has to be um, rotating back you, so you can really have the maximum um, distance where your hand or your wrist um, can get speed and can accelerate. So when you rotate it back the important thing is that your elbow is like the farthest away from the ball when you keep your ball here. Then your body starts moving with the single parts after each other. So you start with your um, waist, with your hip, then your uh, shoulder comes forward, then your elbow, then um, your wrist and then eventually you touch the ball. So this is really important because you really develop your speed, you accelerate each single body part and you keep this acceleration into your wrist and then you have the maximum amount of speed in your wrist. Now it gets tricky because this is basically the same movement as in attacking or as doing a tennis surf or a, a surf with front spin. So what is the big difference? After we did this movement right here, then we keep stable. We keep being stable, our upper body has to be stable. As I already mentioned, when you touch the ball, you really stop the movement. Okay, this is really important because you want to hit our ball as straight as possible. Let's do this from this perspective right here. If we touch the ball right there, without any rotation, the ball builds an air cushion right in front of it and the ball wants to move away from this air cushion or wants to pass this air cushion. And what he does right then, he starts moving. You don't know how he moves and the opponent doesn't either. So this is the tricky part and this is why we do a float surf because nobody knows how the ball will behave and how he will float through the air. Okay, so now that I showed you the technique, we're going to do to learn this in a few steps. So you can see the net right there. I'm not far away from the net and this has a meaning behind it. We are going to start two meters away from the net just to know the movement and to do it with really um, slow force. So the goal is just to hit the ball above the net with the right technique. Try throwing the ball with one hand, try throwing the ball with two hands. Doesn't really matter, try both at least 10 times and then figure out what works best for you. If you can do this from two meters away from the net, try it from four meters, try it from six meters and then try it from the back line which is eight meters away from the net, but don't do it too fast. If you can do it a solid eight or seven or eight out of ten, 
from the two meter then do it from four meters same thing there if you can do a solid seven out of eight from four meters then go on and just do this principle because we want to have the perfect technique or a good enough technique so we can do the same serve over and over and over and over again and if you do it wrong if you for example miss the ball then you will soon feel pain in your shoulder and we really don't want it we have it is really important that you have solid technique so you really avoid injury an injury is not like a sprained ankle or something like that it is also overuse and long-term injuries and we really want to avoid this by having the perfect technique with that being said there's one last thing that i have to mention if you serve the ball always keep your hand open don't do it with a fist never do it with a fist don't keep your hand like this always keep your hand open because if you have the hand like this and you hit the ball slightly to the left or to the right then you will always miss the ball if I spread my hand, then I have at least some fingers on the ball and I won't miss the ball completely. Okay, so that's everything for the really quick introduction on how to do a proper float serve. Thank you for watching. If there are any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. See you in the next video. Bye.